people, I'd say the biggest problem people have with real estate investing in general, whether that's multifamily or single family, is they're like, it takes a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money, or maybe I have money, but I need it for something else. Or, you know, they get scared. And when you realize that you can buy real estate with no money, that's a game changer. I just looked at people that had a lot of money and I saw one common denominator with all of them. And they all had a lot of real estate. They were somehow in real estate. So I'm like, real estate equals money. And who doesn't want money, right? So that was my initial reason for getting into real estate. Um, graduated from college, went down to San Diego, started out as a loan officer, did that for a while. Um, went from a really rough start in this place called Beneficial Finance, which later on got shut down in the, in the uh, subprime crisis or whatever they call that. But um, so I learned how to sell really high, high interest rates. And it was the best and worst thing that ever happened to me because I could sell about anything and I was making, you know, 150, 200 cold calls a day. And so from there, I became um, some of the people who were recruiting to work in mortgage. And so I went on to be a loan officer at a little bit more of a reputable company. And then I became a title rep, which was really cool because I had this guy coming into um, our loan group and he's driving a BMW and taking us to happy hour. And I'm like, Dude, what is your job? <laughs> like, how do, how do I do what this guy's doing? Give me some of that. All he does is, yeah, all he does is schmooze people and he has an expense account. And I'm like, I want your job. So he's like, call this guy and I'll give a shout out to John Wall. He's like, call John Wall with Fidelity Title in San Diego. And so I call him like 10 times. He never calls me back. And then like two months later, he calls me back. He's like, you learned the first lesson in title, persistency. And by the way, that's a good lesson for all of real estate, right? So um, anyway, got to work with them, was doing really well, um, hosting um, events at Petco Park and meeting all the brokers. I was meeting both real estate brokers and lenders. And um, then I started looking at their HUDs, their closing statements. And I'm like, these guys are making like, you know, six figures a month plus. And I'm just like, holy cow, this is crazy. So then I'm like, okay, I got to get my broker's license. So got my broker's license in California. And uh, started a mortgage company, and this was right when the subprime meltdown came. And it was never really a big company, but I learned a lot. Had about six employees, and we were doing a lot of subprime loans. And then that all just went, and the subprime meltdown went away. And so from there, I hung out at the beach and surfed for a while. Built a custom chopper in my garage, and sold that to. You don't gotta lie to be cool, Brad. (laughs) I'll show you photos of it. (laughs) <laughs> and I sold it to, I actually sold it to the lead guitarist of Avenged Sevenfold. So, yeah, yeah pretty cool. You know, uh, Michael's team, can we chin check that, please? Thank you. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> check it out. It's also in my book, you can check that out. Um, <laughs> so then I ended up coming back up to Idaho, where I'm from, and I transferred my mortgage broker's license. Actually, in California at the time, a mortgage broker's license and a real estate license was the same broker license. And I transferred it up to Idaho, took the little test, and then I started doing a lot of, uh, I started a real estate brokerage, had probably about five or six agents, and we started doing a lot of short sales. And we um, were doing, we were purchasing short sales and flipping short sales. And long story short, the whole thing crashed in like 2009. I went from being really successful to like zero dollars. And I think a lot of people have that story, right, in that time period. And um so then I went back home to Burley, my hometown, and became a firefighter. And I was like, you know, the whole time I'm like, I can't stop. Real estate's who I am. Like, I got to do real estate. So now I you're learned a how to do Dang. Yeah, I was a, I was a firefighter. EMT for you're a firefighter. to interrupt, but what do you, what do you not do, Brad? <laughs> That's fabulous. Well, That's very it's, fabulous. Always been, it's always been real estate in the background. So I ended up going to getting a mentor, which is the only shortcut in business, like for whoever's listening to this, don't be afraid to spend money on a mentor because, you know, they say there's no shortcuts in business, but I would say the only argument to that is the one shortcut in business is to hire somebody that's already done what you want to do. And maybe they're not good at something else, but you just find a person that has done what you want to do and you pay them and they give you the shortcuts and you learn from the mistakes. You don't have to make the same mistakes they did. So I hired a mentor to learn how to do creative financing. I bought, uh, 16 houses in six months with no banks, no credit, and none of my own money. And then I went on that year to buy 26 houses. That was 2014. So I had, I had um, 
maybe mastered or got close to mastering creative financing and learning how to buy houses. And this kind of plays into multifamily too, because you, a lot of people, I'd say the biggest problem people have with real estate investing in general, whether that's multifamily or single family, is they're like, it takes a lot of money. I don't have a lot of money, or maybe I have money, but I need it for something else. Or, you know, they get scared. And when you realize that you can buy real estate with no money, that's a game changer. And it, people will tell you that and you'll be like, yeah, I've heard that, but I don't think it's really true. And then, but then when you actually do it, you're like, holy cow. So did that, um, decided I didn't want to stay in that little town. So I was reluctant to retire as a firefighter because I really loved that job. It was really rewarding. I didn't like the politics, but I, I really yeah. enjoyed helping people. And I moved down to Phoenix, got into wholesaling, um, took a company to over a million dollars in revenue in the first year I was there and started doing a lot of transactional stuff. Um, when I mean transactional is meaning that it you know, single family homes are very transactional. And this kind of leads into why I, I love multifamily, because it's like, I would build this deal, I'd go find the seller. That's hard, right? I'd market like crazy, find the seller, and I find the buyer. That's hard. I had to market and I had to contract and I had to make sure that nobody gets upset at each other. Then I got the title company. Then I got, sometimes I got agents and I'm just like, it's a house of cards, like waiting to fall. And it often does fall. And then when you get the check, it's like, okay, now start all over, do the whole thing again. And so I just got really sick of that. I was just like, oh my gosh. And so meanwhile, I was looking at multifamily and I'm like, I knew that was where I was, where I should be. I don't know if it's where I was supposed to be, but it's where I should be. Because I had buddies that were buying islands and like spending, living in Puerto Rico. And they 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 had been in multifamily the whole time. And here I am. Like, yeah, Puerto to Rico. That's my goal is to move our business to Puerto Rico. We have family in Bayamon and it's one of my oh, nice. favorite places. So you just hit my heart. You just went up a couple points, Brad. Yeah, good. <laughs> Puerto man. Rico I love has it my there. heart. Mi gente. Yes. Love it. <laughs> so I saw these guys are making all this money and I'm like, and they weren't working like as hard. I mean, I'm sure they worked hard, but anyway, so I knew I needed to get into multifamily, but for me, it wasn't an easy thing to do. I, again, I had, I'm like, okay, I conquered how to invest in real estate with single family, but with no money. But now I'm like multifamily. I mean, dude, that's got to take a lot of money. I mean, these are 20, 40, 80 million dollar buildings. I don't even know where to start. I've looked at it. I've learned how to underwrite them. You know, I've, I've learned a few things, but I've never, it was always like on the edge, but I never really got into it. And finally, I got so fed up with wholesaling because the market got so saturated. There's a bunch of people teaching how to do it. And it just got to the point where I'm like, everybody and their dog's a wholesaler. And I actually don't even want to be associated with that anymore. I mean, I got a lot of friends in, the, in that industry, but I just wanted to get out of it. I was like, I want to get out of this. And so I, I'm like, okay, I'm all in. I'm all in on multifamily. And that was, when was that? That was 2020 into 2021. So it's been not quite two years. And, um, yeah, uh, went all in, joined with uh, Grants Club. It's actually where I met you. Mm -hmm. And yeah. within six months of joining that club, and also um, I, I was in a lot of groups. I was also in Michael Blanc's group. I was in, um, I, the more you could network, the better. And after joining that club within six months, I bought my first building, $12.8 million, 174 unit building. Within six months with no banks, well, there was a bank. No, none of my own money, none of my own credit. So guys, it can be done. And I went on to, I just went crazy in my first year. I went on to write a book. I created a course. Um, so I have a book on Amazon you can check out. It's five ways to buy apartments with zero down. And it literally takes you through how to do it. Like there's like five different ways to, to get into real estate with no money. And it's a good book. I've read it, y'all. I was very blessed to get some of the first ones. He has a Titan yes. Acquisition WhatsApp group, excellent for networking, which sorry if I'm stealing some of his plugs for later, but that's how nope. I was able to read it. And it's very clean, clear. Some of these books are very high level jargon. And if you're not in the field, it's kind of confusing all the acronyms, right? Brad yeah. Bates breaks it down very easy and digestible. So yeah, I highly recommend your book. It's easy to read. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think when people come into the industry, they have 
they have the, they all have the same questions. Like they're like, how do I present a deal to somebody? What do, what are they looking for in the deal? Where do I find the deal? You know, who do I need on my team? What should I look for in my team? How do I meet my team? Like it's all the same stuff, right? And so I approached it from someone that's either getting their first or next deal. If maybe it's their second deal or third deal, it's you know, it's for people that are just getting into the industry. And I did it just because in that WhatsApp group that we have, which is as of recording this, is like a little over 500 people in there. The same question just kept coming up. So I'm like, okay, let's just let's just do a book on this. And it makes me sound smart, but really all I did was like turn on like a, a auto recorder and I just started talking. Actually, I wrote out an outline and then I just talked about each bullet point and then I went back and changed, you know, 